So in this video we're going to look at an important topic in control systems and that's stability. Whenever you studied continuous systems, you analyze stability based on the criterion of the location of the poles in the S-plane. And we're going to do the same thing for discrete systems except in the Z-plane. First of all, whenever we're dealing with continuous systems, the compensator gain would affect the transient response and stability. And now that we're in the z-plane, the, the gain and also the sampling period affects the response and stability. So that means whether it's underdamped or overdamped or stable or unstable. And here's a figure that we've seen before, and this is a system step response, a discrete system step response for different sampling times. So here we have the largest sampling time, then a smaller one, and a smaller sampling time still. Okay. So again, stability in the z-plane, we want to look at the definition of z, so and how that affects stability, the stability criterion. So for a continuous system, remember poles in the left half of the s-plane meant the system was stable, if all the poles were in the left half of the s-plane. So for a digital system, we're using z, which is defined as e to the ts, where t is the sampling period. And so then if we let s equal this complex variable, alpha plus j times omega, then we get that z is equal to this magnitude, e to the alpha t, at an angle omega t. So what that tells us is we're going to look at this stability in the s-plane and then translate that into the z-plane. So left half of the s-plane means negative value for alpha. The real part is negative. And if alpha is negative, then that means the magnitude of z is less than 1. So e to some negative value is going to be less than 1. So this slide, this figure shows the stable regions in the s-plane, so the left half, and then the z-plane. It's a, the unit circle, inside of a unit circle. And that is the stability criterion for a discrete system. So now we're going to look at this example. We have a unity feedback system where we have a zero order hold and a plant transfer function 27 over s times s plus 27. And we want to find out if the system is stable for two different values of k. That's assuming that the sampling period is a tenth of a second. Okay. So, oh. All right, so here's the generic system. And then in this example, we're using uh, a is equal to 27. So what we need to do is find the transfer function of this feedback system and then analyze its poles or the roots of the denominator and how k affects them. So we'll plug in these two different values of k and see where the roots of the denominator are. So we need to start by getting the transfer function for this system. And so I'll go ahead and redraw that. We'll just call this G of Z. And so the transfer function for this system, T of Z, we know is G of Z divided by 1 plus G of Z. And so here we found the Z transform of the sample data system here. So I just replaced all this sample data system with g of z. So our first step is to find this g of z. So g of z is equal to the z transform of the zero order hold cascaded with the gain and the plant dynamics, 27 over S 
times s plus 27. Now we need to find the z transfer of this function. And we can substitute in the definition of z, and then we can factor out k. So we get this equals is equal to 1 minus z to the negative 1 times k times the z transform of 27. The s will go over here, over s squared times s plus 27. And we'll call this quotient here, we'll call it g1. g1 of s is equal to 27 over s squared times s plus 27. So we want to find the z transform of s, and then we'll be done getting g of z. So now we'll do partial fraction expansion. So this is equal to a over s plus b over s squared plus c over s plus 27. And then we can multiply both sides by this denominator. It's just a one way to solve for the constants here. So we get 27 is equal to as times s plus 27 plus b times s plus 27 plus c s squared. And then we can substitute in values for s to get the different constants. So if we say s is equal to 0, then we get b is equal to, so that makes this term 0 and this term 0. So we have b times 27 is equal to 27. So b is 1. And then if we substitute s equals negative 27, this term goes to 0, this goes to 0, and we have c times 27 squared is equal to 27, so c is equal to 1 over 27. And now we can substitute those two values back in and solve for a by collecting like terms. So 27 is equal to as squared plus as, just distributing this, plus, and then b is equal to 1, so s plus 27, and c is equal to 1 over 27, so plus 1 over 27 s squared. And s equal to something times s squared plus a, wait, I forgot 27 here, so that's a s times 27, so 27 a s. Okay. I just left off this term when I distributed, so 27as. So we have a times 27 plus 1 s, so that was grouping all the s terms, and then we have some s to the 0 terms. So looking on the other side, um, the coefficient for the s terms is 0, so we know that 27 times a plus 1 is equal to 0, and that gives us that a is equal to negative 1 over 27. So now we have g1 of s in as a sum of simpler terms so that we can use our z transform tables to find. All right. So now, once we have g1 of z, then we will be good here, and we can go ahead and distribute these out again. So we just need to find the z transform for g1 of s. Okay, so our first term is negative 1 over 27. So we want to find g1 z. So we'll look at a z transform table. So we have... Negative 1 over, 20, 1 over 27 over s. So that's here. So we have first term is negative 1 over 27 times z divided by z minus 1. And then s squared. That's tz over c minus 1 squared. And 
then 1 over s plus a, we have z over z minus e to the negative a t. So there's g1 of z. And next we just need to distribute these terms to get g of z. And I'll go ahead and use the value that t is equal to 0 0.1. And that gives us that g of z is equal to k times point zero six five five z plus point oh two seven eight. So I we um distributed in these terms and then found a common denominator which is z minus one times z minus 0.0672. So now to find the transfer function for this system here, or for this, uh, we need to determine g over 1 plus g. So that's tz And it's k times 0.0655z plus 0.0278 divided by z squared plus 0.0655k minus 1.067, and that's times z plus. 0.0278k plus 0 0.0672. So there's our transfer function, and we want to find the roots of the denominator, or the poles of this transfer function. And that will tell us whether or not the system is stable. So if we substitute in k is equal to 20, we get that the roots are... 0.12 plus or minus j times 0.78. And so the magnitude of this is less than 1, so that tells us that the system is stable. And if we substitute k is equal to 100 and then find the roots of this expression, we get that the roots are negative 0.58 and negative 4.9. So this is magnitude greater than 1. It's outside the unit circle in the z-plane. And so if k is 100, then the system is unstable at that sampling rate. So if you were to change the sampling rate, uh, then it would possibly become stable. So we can also work this same problem in MATLAB. And I'll go through that. because it's a very useful tool. So MATLAB. Um, so we had the, the plant, and I'm going to call it G2 well, first. OK, so G2 is the plant transfer function. So that was 27 divided by S times S plus 27. And that was cascaded with a zero order hold, and we called that g. So g, well, let me define our sampling time. t is 0.1. So g is continuous to discrete mm, g2 sampling period t, and it's a zero, zero order hold. And so this is the same uh, value for our
for g that we got solving by hand. So 0.655z plus 278. Okay. So we have g, and now we, to get the transfer function of the entire system, t, uh, that's equal to, we can use a feedback function. Well, let me first define k. So k, or give a value to k. So k is 20. t is feedback k times g. So there's our gain cascaded with the plant in zero order hold. So k times g, and the feedback gain is 1. And now we need to find the roots of this transfer function. So R, we can use a pole function. So R as a vector has these two values. And just to make sure that those are, have magnitude less than 1, right. So the magnitude of those is 0.79. And then we can go and change k to 100 and redefine t, r. And so you see that when k is 100, we have poles for the transfer function that have magnitude greater than 1. They're outside of the unit circle.